Viren has asked me to talk about brand building. I think uh, a time when everyone is cutting down on costs, this is the last thing you want to talk about or hear about. And yet it's the first thing we all need to do if we really want to do all the things that have been talked about today, namely uh, get into export business, get into international business, and do a lot of uh, innovation in uh, diversifying into digital printing and so on. So we will structure the session today uh, very quickly for 15 minutes or maximum 20, covering brand anatomy, what is a brand, the essence, the impact, and the benefits of uh, having a good brand. We'll touch upon the brand builders, uh, the things that go into the process of brand building, the four Ps, the three I's, and we will touch upon Jack Trout's uh, marketing principles. Uh, we will learn about the tricks of the trade from the celebrity brands uh, who have agreed to share what they have done to build their brands. So that's the overall structure. Uh, their philosophies will be presented by IPP, Comart. These are all brands that you can recognize very easily. The last one is obviously the guy who put his fingerprint on the golden elephant and, and uh, wouldn't let it go. What is a brand? It's nothing but image, feelings, and associations. That's what a brand is all about. The essence is when you ask someone, uh, to think of your company, how do they see your company? What is the image that they have in their minds? Might be interesting to ask them to visualize an animal or a car that represents the characteristics that they think your company has. If they say an elephant, you know they're thinking of your company as huge, big, strong, but very slow, very lethargic. If they think of, it, of the company as a tiger, then you know that it's fast, aggressive, and predatory. Uh, if they think of you as a mix between tiger and elephant, then you have something there. So feelings follow images in the mind. And uh, feelings is not about just how they feel about your company, but how your company makes them feel about themselves. I think that's a very important thing. And the perception that they have about the company is a reality in their minds. So it's important that uh, feelings and perceptions are also managed appropriately. And finally, the associations. Have they had good experiences, bad experiences? What comes to their mind? These are the issues that are summarized very well by Tom Asaker, and I'll just read through this uh, two paragraphs which I found very interesting. Far too many companies are focused on the product and not the experience. We need to replace our brain with our heart because that's often how people make decisions. Studies have proven that the essential difference between emotion and reason is that emotion leads to action and reason leads to conclusions. Isn't that interesting? What do you want? Do you want action or do you want people to think? The question you need to ask, how am I making my customers feel? Am I making them compare or am I making them care? There is a big difference. Caring and feelings drive action. The other stuff is just a tool. The bottom line is that the really hard stuff is the soft stuff. It's the feelings of your customers and your employees that, in the end, is your competitive advantage. So everything else obviously builds that up. But ultimately, the final, uh, the, the end mile journey is about creating the right perceptions, feelings, and experiences. If you do succeed in doing that and have a superior brand image, what does it result in? It results in customer loyalties, employee loyalties, and investor goodwill. Clearly, that gives you a competitive advantage because customer loyalty leads to you to be able to charge premium pricing for the same product, or you could have a greater market share at the same price as your competitor because you would be the preferred supplier. 
Employee loyalty leads to higher productivity because a happy employee is the one that we need in our printing plants. And of course, lower attrition rate, which is a serious issue today in the industry. Goodwill of industries, uh, uh, investors, clearly necessary. They will always invest in a good brand. They will always pay premium for brands that uh, are well known, well accepted. So if you go for mergers and acquisitions, uh, you go for some kind of joint venture, valuation of your company has to be done. This brand image uh, is very handy at that time. And with your bankers, perhaps you can negotiate a lower interest rate. IPO also is very helpful. Maybe some of the panelists can share their experiences on what they did with their brand before going in for IPO. Higher brand value, what does higher brand value or equity actually mean? It's a very intangible thing and it's often misunderstood. So here is a simple definition. It's an accumulated brand goodwill in the market. And in essence, it's the difference between the book value of your company and the stock market value of your company if you are a listed company. Uh, and the difference between the two can be explained as the brand value of your company. That because the expectations of the investors from your company are high, your brand equity is high, it's intangible. And the intangible net worth, they say, could be as much as one third of the total market cap of the company. Coke and Microsoft brands, uh, in 2001, they were valued at 134 billion, the intangible value. Coke, IBM, Nokia, Disney, McDonald's, Mercedes Benz, the brand value is 45% of each company's market cap. So what they've invested in building those brands is yielding them great benefit in the marketplace. How do we go about doing brand building? Let's first clarify some of the misconcepts that are there. I'm sure none of you have these misconcepts, but I'm just going to share this so that you can share it with your friends. Brand building is needed for products, not for services. You know that's not true. Uh, services need brand building even more because when somebody buys a product, he can test it. After he buys the product, if it doesn't work well, he can return it. Printing, if somebody comes and gives you a print job, it has to be based on trust. It has to be based on his past experience. It has to be based on what he believes he will get out of your press. And of course, he can get the job reprinted, but uh, he may have missed the deadline by then. So for services, it's much more important. The same thing applies to catering, uh, retailing, you name it. Another misconcept is brand building essentially means selecting a good name for the company or the product and having a well-designed stationery, you know, corporate identity program, which is again not true. It's in fact, brand building encompasses management philosophy, manufacturing excellence, marketing and advertising strategies, the whole ball game. Another misconcept is that if our quality is good, our brand will end up being good. Of course, you cannot have a good brand without good quality, but it's not true that if you have good quality, you will have a good brand. A lot of investment is necessary to build a good brand, and we'll talk about how one can go about doing that. Four P's and three I's uh, are the key ingredients for brand building, positioning, performance, perform promotion, and people. Positioning includes repositioning because a company cannot stick to the same position throughout its lifespan. We have seen the brand leaders change their position many times. So uh, these are the key ingredients which are visible. Also what's visible is the infrastructure. One of the three I's, the fundamentals, are infrastructure, that you have, the technology that you employ, how innovative the company is. And that is something which is born out of the innovativeness, the processes that you have inside the company. It may not be very visible to the outside uh, uh, market. And finally, the integrity, which obviously is the foundation. So if you have four Ps and three Is, there is a good chance you'll have a good brand. 